Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning and welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church's Devotional Moment. I'm Pastor Brenda Bird. Would you turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 4? And we're going to look at verses 1 through 7. Let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. I pray, O oh God, that as we listen, as we study, Lord, that your word would go deep within our hearts and take root. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit who speaks to us, who gives us revelation, who gives us illumination, O oh God, who comforts our hearts and remind us, O oh God, that we are to uh, walk on the straight and narrow, that there's a narrow road that leads to you, O oh God, and the road to destruction is wide and many are on it. And so, God, we just pray, Lord God, for your word to manifest in our souls and mind and heart today because we want to do your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today, I just want to talk to you about changing our thought life. Changing our thought life. If we change the way we think, we will change the way we speak. And if we change the way we speak, we would change our destiny. In 1 Peter chapter 4, it says, Since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our time, our lifetime, excuse me, in doing the will of the Gentiles or doing the will of the nations. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, robberies, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dispensation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to the men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. I want to look at the first part of these verses where it says, Since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. Hallelujah. Jesus, when he walked this earth, we know he walked this earth in the form of a man. Filled with the spirit of God. Led by the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. And so he's telling us here that we are to have the same mind that Christ had. The Bible tells us that we have the mind of Christ. So how do we walk in this mindset? How do we keep the mind of Christ through the word of God? Reading the word of God, speaking the word of God, applying the word of God. The word tells us that it makes no sense for us to read the word with no intention on doing it. It says that we are to be doers of God's word, not just hearers. And many times we know what the word of God says, and we know what we want or we desire, and we struggle between the two. And we think sometimes in our, uh, I say, uh, lustful thinking, we think that we can navigate the two. But, or balance the two, but we cannot. The Lord said that he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that light is for us to show forth his glory in our lives. So if we're trying to balance the things in the way, in the thinking of the world with the spiritual, it's not going to work. The Bible tells us, yes, we are in the world, but we are not to be of the world. We are to focus, one, on the gospel. That is our mandate. That is our calling. 
to go out and preach the gospel, to minister to those that are hurting, broken, lost, and destitute. However, we can't on the opposite side think that because we are serving God in ministry and we're doing the work that God calls us to do, that we somehow get a pass. No, no, no. That's what I love about God. God's word is for all of us. And the same thing he said to you, he said to me. I'm, I personally do not believe that God um, compromises his word. I personally do not believe that there is any shortcuts to walking with God. I do believe that sometimes it's a struggle in our mind. This is why the Lord says that we are to have the mind of Christ and that we are to pull down every imagination that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. The Bible tells us as a man or a woman think, so is he or so shall they become. So understand that Satan is always vying for your mind. But God is buying for your mind as well. And so this is why he tells us that we are to study the word of God, to show ourselves approved unto him, a workman who need not be put to shame, rightly dividing the word of truth. And many times we think rightly dividing the word of truth is teaching someone else or preaching someone else. No, no, no. The word of God is a two-edged sword. Hallelujah. And it cuts between the soul and the spirit. It cuts between the thinking of the mind, the soulish behavior, the soulish desires, and the higher living and the higher walking and the higher calling, the upward calling that we read about in God. Discipline is a way of life for the believer. And I know, well, I, let me correct that. I know for me, sometimes it is a struggle. But I have made up my mind. I have set my eyes to the flint, as the old prophet said. I am going to see Jesus. And I am going to see him as Savior, not as judge. And so... This is my desire for myself, and this is my desire for every brother and sister in the Lord. So he said here that we are to have the same mind as Christ. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So God is telling us here that there's a suffering bringing this flesh under subjection of the Holy Spirit, bringing this flesh under the obedience of God. Because the flesh wants what it wants. The flesh wants what it wants. Uh, it's a saying that goes like one sin is never enough and a million, one, one sin is too much and a thousand sins is never enough. Now, I know that we are not perfect. God knows to walk with us and to guide us through this journey called life. But our heart should be to obey the Lord. And where we can uh, walk in victory, where we can walk in the power of God, he expects us to do so. Let's go on. Verse uh, 2 says, he no longer should live in the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. Many times we have to turn down our thoughts and our desire, or whatever it could be. It could be covetousness. It could be greed for money. It can be relationships. It can be anything. I'm not focusing on one thing. What I'm saying here is the word of God tells us that we are to put those things aside and pick up God's will for our life. And a lot of times God's will is not what we want. Or it doesn't happen when we want it to happen or as quick as we want it to happen. But I found in my journey, I don't know about you, when I wait on God, I am always, always, always glad I did. Let's finish out. I have a few more verses before we close. He says here in three, for we have spent enough of our time, our past lifetime, in doing the will of the Gentiles, doing the will of the world. Doing our will, the will of the nations. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelry, drink, drinking, parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dispensation, speaking evil of you. Well, understand this. People that you don't do the things that they do, 
You know, the song says, the places I used to go, I don't go anymore. The things I used to say, I don't say anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do anymore. It's a great day since I've been born again. So it's going to be people that's going to talk about you. It's going to be people that's going to judge you. It's going to be people that's going to say all kinds of stuff to you. It's going to be people that say, oh, it's not going to, it don't take all of that. Listen, your walk and my walk is an individual walk with God. And I believe long as I keep my eyes on the Lord, the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to lead me and guide me. And so I think that it's very important that we remember whom we belong to and whom we are serving. It's not about what people think. They don't have to uh, uh, understand your decisions. Only thing you have to know that you have peace in your heart with God, that he has, uh, uh, has, he has ordained what you are doing, that he is the one who is walking you through this journey. The most important thing is, is to listen to the word of God, to be obedient to the spirit of God. And we will enter into our destiny that God has for us. May the Lord bless you, my dear sister and brother. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his sweet, sweet countenance towards you and give you his peace. Change the way you think, change the way you speak, and that will change your destiny. God bless you. Have a good day.